Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! The following video will contain spoilers from the Legend of Tomorrow season finale episode Legendary, as well as the season 2 finale of The Flash episode titled The Race of His Life. So if you don't want anything spoiled or ruined for you, stop watching now! Hey guys, Dave here. Okay, well I said I was going to make this video, so that's what I'm doing now. Okay, here's what's going on. Uh, apparently people are wanting to talk to me already about it. <laughs> okay, so we've seen the uh, season finales end on two major cliffhangers on two DC on CW shows. That's why instead of saying the Arrow Theory or the Flash Theory or Legend of Tomorrow Theory, for this particular video, and I'm pretty sure in other ones coming up, I'm going to call it the DC on CW Theory. Uh, so it's going to be encompassing all four of the DC on CW shows, so it's going to be kind of interesting. So, if you guys have seen it, then you know that Legend of Tomorrow stopped Vandal Savage by creating a paradox, although not the devastating one that he wanted to do amplified by Nth Metal, but they killed an immortal three different times at the same time approximate time simultaneously now if okay 1958 1975 2021 if you die in 58 how are you supposed to be in 1975 I, I know they use a time shift to go back from 2166 to, to 2021 so still it boggles the frickin' mind. How does this work? Now, he was going to try to reset things to go back to ancient Egyptian time and change history that way. He still was killed, but those are ripples. Now, in the Flash season finale, we saw, after playing around with time and finding out various things like time remnants and things like that, uh, Barry goes back and finally decides to do what he was building up to in season one, which is going back and stopping Reverse Flash from killing his mother 17 years ago now. And he actually does. We actually get to see his younger self from season one fade because that timeline never happens. Now, reading the comic books and watching things like the Flashpoint Paradox, we know that when certain events have changed, they become ripple effects that changes all of reality and things like that. So, here's where it gets interesting. Now, back in the Silver Age, back in the 50s and 60s when Barry Allen became the Flash, he originally was a big comic book reader himself. Uh, he actually, he was working in his lab one night, got struck by lightning, hit the, by the chemicals, and he was inspired by a comic book he read of Jay Garrick, the Flash, to become his own version. That's the cool thing about the multiverse in DC. What is reality in one universe is actually fiction in another. So you can actually live that thing for things in comic books and different things like that. So kind of cool. But the thing is, in the Silver Age, Barry did become it without his mother or father dying or anything tragic happening. Later on, uh, after the whole crises and things like that, eventually they had it where Reverse Flash went back in time and killing his mother became a fixed point in time for him to become a police scientist and things like that because that was what drove him. Well, in Flashpoint Paradox, he still became a police scientist. He just wasn't on the lab that night to get doused by chemicals when the lightning hit. So, in that reality, he never became the Flash, which kind of stunk because since he was removed from time, he remembered all these things. But apparently, it was described this way If you break the sound barrier, you create a sonic boom. By breaking the time barrier, you create a time boom. So, I mean, it, it's kind of a knockoff thing of saying that uh, everything you do has an effect even before or after you showed up. So, it, But it changed things so drastically. It made a frightening world. Things were very much altered. And Barry had to go back in time, get his powers back, and save, you know, stop himself from saving his mother because that became a fixed point. Uh, he also, at the same time, had merged the standard DCU with the Wildstorm, with uh, you know the Authority, Wildcats, Grifter, things like that, as well as the 
DC Vertigo universe that had Constantine, Swamp Thing, I Zombie, Lucifer, merged them all three into the same reality, creating the New 52. So it was a zipper effect to try to reinforce it for an upcoming threat that was coming. So it was very interesting, and a lot of people were freaking out. Now, at the ending of season two of Flash, does this mean that we're going to get the Flashpoint paradox for season three? Possibly. But, I mean, some people were freaking out about with Zoom trying to destroy the, you know, the multiverse. This sounds more like a crisis thing. Uh, could he be somehow contacted the Anti-Monitor? Could he be working for that? I don't know. But here's the thing. We have three different events that have happened now. I'm sorry, four different events uh, that have created ripple effects in the past. For a paradox and one hit to come. 1958, Vandal Savages killed the first time. I'm not even counting the other stuff that Legend of Tomorrow have gone through, like they're playing around in the Wild West and Sergeant Rock dying apparently in 1944. All this little meddling around. I don't even get none of that. So 1958, 1975, 1999, and 2021. Now, one event could have certain ripple effects. But we've got four different freaking ripple events that are happening back and forth. Not to mention the other stuff that the, that the Legend of Tomorrow had been doing. All of this is going to be changing things around. Now, when Rex Tyler announced himself as a member of the Justice Society of America that Mick Rory sent him, this obviously talks about a timeline that does Rip Hunter know. See, this is the thing. Uh, if you take a look at a great website, thearrowverse.com, I recommend it. Uh, <laughs> I think you guys are actually watching me on it right now, so whatever. Anyway, if you guys take a look, there are actually several different things on his display case that Rip Hunter has that are remnants of the past. It looked like Our Man's Hourglass, uh, Ma Hunkle's helmet when she was the Red Tornado. We had uh, Sergeant Rock's helmet. All these little different things that indicate connection to the past, to uh, does Rip understand this thing? I don't know. But getting into what happened in The Flash, we now know that the classic Jay Garrick that we all like seems to have come from Earth 3. At least that's what they're classifying it as right now. So somewhere out there, he could actually be a member of the Justice Society of America. This could be the same reality where Rex Tyler came from in Legends of Tomorrow. But this means that realities are going to start to cross. But this is where it gets bad. Originally, season one of The Flash, it set things up that Eobard Thawne goes back in time, kills Barry Allen's mother, then he loses his connection to the Speed Force, he then takes, uh, he kills uh, Harrison Wells and his wife, he assumes the identity of Harrison Wells and tells them that in 2020 his particle accelerator would do some amazing things, but I needed to, to be a little sooner than that. So he adopts that and he changed the entire timeline. Reverse Flash was necessary to alter the timeline to get the Particle Accelerator to go off in 2013 instead of 2020 by the original uh, schedule. So all of that was in effect. All of that was an altered timeline right there. So, with Barry Allen stopping his mother from dying, does Barry go on to become a forensic scientist? Does Barry Allen eventually help uh, Oliver Queen and Team Arrow to stop Deathstroke? Does Caitlin Snow and Cisco Ramon do anything to help to find cures for Mirakuru and stuff like that? All of that becomes in question because all of that affected the Arrowverse, as it were. So there are certain things that could happen, but other things could have a ripple effect. I mean, now that... Uh, it was, they were told to have the, the League of Assassins go to Lan Yu to pick up Sarah, thanks to Sarah telling Rachel Ghoul that back in the 50s. Uh, that was not a good idea. It's really iffy. It's kind of, you don't know what kind of ripple effects it's going to have. So all of these ripples are going to happen and everything can be bumped. Now here's the kicker. Without Eobard Thawne dying and creating a wormhole singularity that tears a hole through, that we lose Ronnie Raymond, that opens up a portal for Earth-1 and Earth-2, for the multiverse essentially to be formed, none of that happens, because Barry Allen doesn't do that. So, 
are those universes still out there that just aren't going to interact? Does that mean that anyone from Earth 2 is not going to interact with them? Is Earth 3 going to somehow get bumped in there? If that's the case, how so? What could have happened to open up a doorway to these other realities if, unless the power that was unleashed by Vandal Savage and Barry changing the timeline created that much big of a ripple to make it happen? All of these things have an effect. And also, since uh, Supergirl is going to be coming to the CW this fall, I did not know until doing research that uh, the CW and CBS were both owned by the same parent company, so that's kind of cool. But uh, now that Supergirl is coming to the CW, there's wonder if they're going to try to merge realities. Now people are saying, is there, are they going to be bringing Crisis in a little bit too soon? No, technically, Flashpoint was all about the world getting broken and then a couple different realities fusing together. We could be getting that. So that could be acting like a zipper effect to kind of like suture them together. Uh, I hope they're not going to do it immediately. And also, there was a cool villain, a villainess I should say, that Supergirl had. She didn't last very long, but she was extremely powerful. Her name was Black Star, with two R's at the end. Uh, she eventually figured out Einstein's uh, a unified field theory. So she could tap into all the cosmic forces. She had enough power to actually darn near kill Supergirl. Uh, she ended up getting torn apart when she essentially created two black holes and was sucked into both of them and ripped apart, so that kind of stunk. But Black Star on Supergirl could actually be an interesting character that could manipulate the forces necessary to open up a portal from that world to the others. So it, and we know now that there's also going to be a Supergirl, Arrow, Flash, and Legends of Tomorrow crossover a multi-show crossover that's going to be happening coming up in December. So they're already planning this. So here's an interesting theory, guys. Everyone's been noticing how Arrow has kicked this stuff off. And the first two seasons, pretty darn good. Third season, nah. Fourth season, well, you can't just start a boycott you know, or people just demanding that, you know, that people be fired for no good reason. One thing I've been saying about Legend of Tomorrow is that it's been experimental. They were going beyond things that were never really in the comics, although they took basic ideas and just put these characters together to make a hell of a story. It's also been said in interviews that Mark Guggenheim, I believe other producers have actually said that when they look at Arrow and the Decline, someone has actually referred to this as an acceptable loss. So they knew that there were going to be things that are going to be dropping off, and somehow this is okay for them. That doesn't make any sense to me. Until I thought of this. Now, bear with me on this. Keep this in mind. What if... Now, like I guess it, it's going to take a lot to try to get my faith back in the writer's hands again. Now that Jeff Johns is actually going to be head of the DC movies, and I know he has a big thing to do with The Flash, hopefully he's also going to be having some influence on the rest of the TV shows too. Here's an idea. Imagine that as they're doing experimental stuff with Legends to see if it picks up or not, they're trying other things that they're a little iffy about in Arrow. Some things work, some things don't. Some things people are happy about, some things are not. So, what happens if they decide to go to those places, those dark, frightening, not-so-happy places where hell has gone down, knowing that something was going to come along and re- set or reboot it to have a ripple effect that certain things will change some things will be fixed this could actually be that opportunity now if that's the case if this is a show-wide idea about a multiple crossover that's already been happening to try to get everything in sync and to hopefully try to bring arrow back to some kind of quality and to also potentially bring back characters we love like laura lance that would be actually kind of brilliant or Everything could have just been happening anyway. No one's going to change anything. I mean, this multiverse crossover thing could just be an excuse to try to fix things, to, to, to shoehorn it in. And I hope that's not the case, because each show has their own charms and their own good things about them, no matter what you feel about them. Uh, yeah, I do review videos for The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow more than I've ever done for Arrow or Supergirl, but I do ch chime in with various theory videos. And each one has their own strengths and charms and good things for them. 
each has their own problems, but they're trying to work them out. So, what if all of this is actually part of a grand design to see what works, what doesn't, and when they have this event, it's just going to be like a flashpoint where they're going to zipper at least the Supergirl and the DC on CW universes together and fix certain things from a certain time point. Could be interesting. We could get some alterations there. Not to mention, Stephen Amell has already admitted that he's got his contract up until 2019. The way things have been going, people have been doubting if there even will be an Arrow of 2019, or if anyone will even give a crap. What if this is the part of the experimental thing, trying to see what works and what won't, so that they can try to have this big event and reset it? Now, some people are saying, no, that would be stupid to try to get rid of all that continuity and all that, but DC's been doing it successfully every, what, 20, 30 years? Sometimes even sooner? Seeing something like that on television could be possible, and it could be the spark to actually get Arrow interesting and back on track again. Not to mention, if we have the possibility of getting Supergirl in here, then this could finally create a world where Superman is there as well. This could open up the door for possibly Batman or other stuff to happen. As long as they don't try to merge that with a powerless universe. Oh, God, I'm already feeling iffy about that. <laughs> if you don't know about powerless... Do a search on the web. Uh, it's a new show coming up on NBC. It's a sitcom that's going to be set in the DCU. It stars pe ordinary people working in an insurance firm covering damage done by super people fight. <sighs> that hurts my soul. But, is it possible that this event that's going to be happening in Flash as well as the ripple effects created by Legends of Tomorrow, could this actually create the reality that brings the Justice Society of America in here? Could this actually say that without Barry's doing this, or these chain of events happening, the multiverse won't line up the way it should be, and something else will happen? So, maybe this is actually said that it's going to happen, and the realities will merge. It's a possibility. We don't know yet. But, I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see. So, what do you guys think? Do you think that possibly, maybe, that the guys behind Arrow, no matter what screwed up things they've been doing, no matter what characters they've been killing off and saying it's going to be permanent, do you actually think this might be part of a larger plan? Or do you think that this just might be an excuse to try to fix the things that they broke and go ahead with a do-over? What do you think about Supergirl? possibly starting off originally as its own show, but eventually merging with the rest of the shows on the CW. Like I said, I want to make this video to start a discussion. So please, like, comment, subscribe, share, pass this bad boy around, and let's get to talking. Until next time, Dave signing off, wherever you are in the multiverse. Peace. Yum yum. <laughs>